Hello and welcome to part 6 of my video series on how to use Blender 2.7. In this video, we're going to continue on from the last video in which we used edit mode to create custom shapes. In the last video, we created a simple chair and a house in edit mode using the extrude tool and the loop cut or loop cut and slide tools. In this video, we're going to create a simple cartoon Bugs Bunny sort of a head, like from Looney Tunes. So let's go ahead and get started. If I click on the splash screen, it'll disappear. Now we're actually going to start making our character's head from a cube. You might think that because the character's head is somewhat round that we might start with a UV sphere and you'd be wrong because a UV sphere, if you go and look in edit mode at the top and bottom of the UV sphere, it has a set of triangular faces. Now triangular faces are okay if you're just working with simple objects, but if you're modeling, especially if you're modeling a character's head or something organic, triangular faces are to be avoided. Let's go ahead and let's make this cube round. I'm going to select it and in edit mode, so I'll press tab to get into edit mode, I'm going to go into face select mode and we'll zoom in on it. I want to make sure that all my faces are selected. So if you tap A a few times, that toggles everything selected or nothing selected. So like I want it all orange and selected. And I'm going to subdivide this cube up so it has three cuts in all directions. The way you subdivide in Blender in edit mode is on your tool shelf under the tools tab, you need to find the add section and click on the subdivide button. If you do that, you will get one cut in each direction through all the sides on your cube. So it's subdivided now into four faces for each original face. But I want to make two cuts in both directions. So I'm going to just change the number of cuts here in my subdivide section up from one to two. The other way I could have done this, I'm going to undo this, is I can go to my specials menu. With your mouse in the 3D viewport, if you tap W while you're in edit mode, you get the specials menu, which gives you kind of a list of shortcuts to common things you would do in edit mode to edit what you're working on. The first option is subdivide, so I'll just click on that, and then I'll turn the number of cuts up to two. There are more options for subdivide, but uh, we're gonna do this sort of manually. To make this cube round now, I'm gonna select all the middle faces on all six sides. So I'm gonna select the first one, hold shift, select the other ones, and then let go of shift and orbit around to the other side, bottom, hold shift again to select more, and now I have all six sides selected. With all six sides selected, you'll notice that the, the gizmo, your arrows or whichever one that you're on, move, scale, or rotate, they are in the middle of your cube because when you select multiple things, the gizmo goes in their median point, and that is how, that's how it is by default. The median point of all these cubes is in the very middle of the cube, and if I scale, each one of these faces will become a little bit bigger, but they'll also scale apart. So I'll tap S, and you'll see that it'll now look like the cube is being expanded by a growing ball from the middle of the cube. So what I'm going to do is I'll actually click to stop that for a sec. I'm going to press 1 and then 5 to go into orthographic front view, and I'm going to tap S and kind of make it as round as possible. Now, some people have told me this looks really confusing if you're in perspective mode. So if I go down to the view and change it from orthographic to perspective, so it'll say persp, it looks funny, especially when you're up close, because you know one of these angles looks like it's coming to the front of the cube and the other one doesn't, and that's just because of the distortion of being in perspective mode. So I like to stick an orthographic view when I'm modeling, and I'll stick to the front view so I can see it kind of straight on. I'm going to scale these a little bit more just to make it the way I want it, make it as round as possible. But it still looks like my cube has pointy corners from the original cube on it. So I'm going to select those vertices on all eight of the corners, and I'm going to scale them inwards, and that will look very, very round. So I selected most of them. I'll just orbit around, hold shift again, and select the last one. And now I'll tap S and pull inwards, and we have a pretty well round object to make a head from. So if you need to rewind and practice that, that's fine. It won't turn out right possibly the first time you do it, but it is quite simple and quite fast with practice to turn a cube into a rounded object to start modeling from. I need to start modeling the facial features now, and the first thing we're going to do is the character's nose. I want to find the, the front of the character's face, so I'm going to press 1 to go to front view, and then I'm going to go into 
face select mode and select the front of the character's face. This is where the nose is going to be extruded from. We're going to kind of model an Elmer Fudd nose. In other words, a nose that's shaped like a light bulb. So I'm going to extrude from this face, but it's way too big right now. So I'll tap S and make it smaller. This will be the base of the nose where it's extruded from. And we'll extrude out from here and then scale and extrude and scale and extrude and scale to make the nose the right shape. So I'm going to tap E, pull out, and then tap S. So as you can see, I'm going to keep doing that again. E, and then maybe I'll pull that back in a little bit, and then E, and then S. If you are extruding, by the way, I'm going to undo a few steps. The common thing for beginners to do is to extrude from like this sort of an angle. It's very hard for me to tell how far I'm extruding right now because I'm looking at it almost straight on. That's not a good idea, of course. You'll want to extrude from sort of like a diagonal user orthographic perspective. Uh, so I'll undo that and go back out. Right about there. And E. And then click. And then S. Now, if I look at my face straight on, the nose is square. I don't want that. I want it to be rounded on all sides. So I'm going to have to make some loop cuts, and then I can pull on the extra edges I get. So I'm going to alt tap Control R, um, or alternatively, of course, I can press on loop cut and slide. That does the same thing. And I'll make a cut right there, up and down across the middle of the character's face. And I'll grab these three edges and pull up on them, and then the bottom three edges and pull down on them to make it rounded on the top and bottom. Same thing side to side, control R, click, right click. This time though, I'm going to select all six edges on both sides and I'll just scale them out on the X axis. So I'll select all six, click on my scale gizmo and drag out. And that way each side will be a little bit more rounded than the top and bottom were when I just move them rather than scale them. All right, that looks pretty good to me. What I might want to do is adjust these a little bit. Now, let's say I wanted to slide all these edges back. I don't have to do this manually. I don't have to select edges manually if they form a loop. The quick way of selecting an edge loop, in other words, edges that are connected around an object that are connected end to end, is, I'm going to go back to my move gizmo. If I hold Alt, and right click on an edge, it'll select all the edges in that edge loop. So it's very easy, just holding down Alt and right clicking on an edge to select an edge loop. You can think of an edge loop as being like a loop of string around tied around your finger. It's a very thin, narrow thing that goes all the way around an object. Now, just keep in mind though, edge loops are can be interrupted by extrusions and intersections of edges that don't have four roads essentially coming off from them. If I hold Alt and right click on this edge, it'll select the edge loop that goes all the way around the head. But if I right click on this edge, because there's an intersection of only three right there, in other words, not four, it gets interrupted. So the edge loop only goes from there, this three point intersection to this three point intersection. If you have anything other than four, it won't work. So if you have a five way intersection, that won't work either. It only works when you have a consistent set of four-way intersections around a mesh. So this is an edge loop. Otherwise, if I want to select, let's say, all of these edges, oops, just the ones that are parallel, you can do that as well very easily. If you hold Control and Alt and right-click on an edge, it'll select all the parallel edges around an object, and that's called an edge ring. You can think of that as being like a wedding ring on your finger. Um, it's thicker than just a loop of string around your finger. All right, so I'm going to take this edge loop and I'm going to move it back a little bit. Maybe I want to make a, a loop cut around the whole nose. Maybe I'll scale it. Maybe this one, maybe I liked it better forward, but maybe a little bit smaller. And maybe I wanted the faces on the front of the uh, nose to be a little bit smaller as well. That's looking pretty good to me. I'll make a loop cut around the uh, top of the head, right about there because I want to give this character some cheekbone shape and some eyebrow shape. If you study character design, especially in cartoons, you'll know that eyes are the most expressive part of a character and eyebrows. If you've ever watched Walls and Gromit, that's a, a claymation set of animations from the 
90s and early 2000s, you'll know that the character Gromit's eyebrows are his most expressive part because he doesn't talk. All of the way that he expresses what he's feeling is through his eyebrows and eye movements. So I'm going to pull up on these eyebrows as well, and maybe I'll make them a little bit bigger by scaling them out. And that looks okay to me. Let's go ahead and scale these two vertices towards each other to make them a little bit longer, and these ones together to make them a little bit more of a, uh, whoops, more of a uh, bridge of the nose. Maybe I'll pull this one in a little bit as well. The next thing I'll do is I'm going to add eye sockets. Now, eye sockets need to kind of have a set of concentric circles that kind of go inwards and inwards gradually towards the middle of the, or the back of the eye. To do that, I first want to make this area, that are these two faces, as round as I can. So I'm going to make an edge or a loop cut uh, up and down through the middle side of the head, right there. And I'll go to my front view, and I'm going to grab the vertices around the edge and just kind of grab them and make that section as round as I can without distorting the head too much. So I'll go right about there. That's about as good as I'm going to get in this short of a video. Um, so now what I want to do is I want to inset these four faces inwards uh, so that they go more inside the head and we're going to fix it to be a little bit more round as well as we go. To inset faces, the way I used to do it is I used to, and you don't have to follow along with me for this part, is if you tap E to extrude, but then you right click, there is still an extrusion there, but it's totally flat with the original set of faces right there. Now that's normally a dangerous thing, but if I then tap S to scale down, I then get these inset faces in which I can pull inside the character's face to make that sort of an eye socket. And I can keep on doing that, but there is a faster way. So I'll undo so I no longer have those extra dots there. Back to my original four faces. To inset quickly, and this is a fairly new tool in Blender, you tap I with faces selected. And when you tap I, you can inset basically a smaller version of the same original faces, and you get a ring of edges or a ring of faces around your original. That makes an inset. So I'm going to undo and do that again. I'll tap I and move my mouse. Now you'll notice that as soon as you tap I and you click, you have an inset faces section, like you often get a section when you first do something and that give you options for your inset. By default, select outer is checked, which means you get these ones selected rather than the inside four. I usually uncheck that because I usually want to start working with the inside ones immediately. Um, so I would unselect that too. Now I'm going to make this a little more rounder because we want the eye socket to be as round as we can. So I'm going to grab some of these edges, or vertices rather, and uh, play with them. You want your up and down lines to be generally as up and down and side to side or straight as you can. Otherwise, the more you go inwards, the more they'll become distorted. You're right about there. There. Okay, let's leave it right about at that. I'll do the inset one or two more times. So I'll select these four. I'll tap I, move my mouse inwards, and you'll see how they'll kind of get distorted a little bit. I'm going to pull this inwards a little bit as well. That looks good to me. And I'm going to correct some of the distortion right about there. Let's make it as round as we can. Now, I'm going to do it one more time, but you could leave it at that. That's not a bad shape eye socket, but I'll just do one more just for practice. I click and then move them back. And I would spend some time fixing the way that looks, but that's okay for me for now. We're not going to do both eye sockets in this video, because again, in the next video, we're going to cover the mirror modifier, which allows you to model both halves of the character at the same time, but it's important to know how to do these steps first. Let's go ahead and let's add some bunny ears to this character. I want to extrude them from these two faces, but they're too wide or too deep right now. So I'm going to do a loop cut around the side of the head, but I want not just one line, I want two. So I'm going to scroll up on my mouse, or down if you're on a Mac with natural scroll direction. In fact, you can go crazy with this, but don't. <laughs> just use two cuts, and then I'll click and right click. and. So the faces that are going to be extruded for the bunny ears are these two, but I want to make them a little bit more round first, or oval, so I'll scale that edge and that edge 
maybe like that. And I'm gonna scale them both down because the base of the bunny ear is gonna be smaller than that. In fact, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna inset them. You'll notice, by the way, that inset has an option for depth, and that makes it kind of do an extrusion. I don't want any depth there, so I'm gonna turn that back to zero. And I actually probably want a little bit of extrusion, so I will turn it up just a little bit. There we go. So that will be the base of my bunny ear. I'm gonna zoom out and we'll extrude with the E key, of course, to right about there. I want the end of the bunny ear to be a little bit smaller than that. And now we'll do some loop cuts across the circumference of the ear uh, to make it about the right shape. And about there. Uh, I want this one to be a little bit bigger actually, so I'm gonna hold Alt and right click on it. So I'll select the whole edge loop again and I'll scale it up to about there. Same thing with this one. Control R, scale, Control R, scale, uh, Control R, scale. The end of the bunny ear is too pointy for me right now, so I'm gonna take those two faces and I'm gonna drag them uh, or grab them and pull them kind of like that, I suppose. I'm not super happy with this, but I'm gonna leave it as it is uh, in terms of its shape. But I wanna create that sort of inset area on the front of the bunny's ear that has a different color. So I'm gonna select the whole set of front faces just with the shift key. And uh, I'm gonna tap I. And I think I still had some depth turned on, so I'll turn that off just by entering in zero there. And maybe I'll pull them in a little bit. And now I'm gonna do another eye, right about there. But I want some negative depth. I want it to go inwards. So I'll adjust my depth like so. Okay, so that is the bunny ear. The next thing we'll do, actually before we do the mouth, let's go ahead and make uh, a neck for the bunny. So I'm gonna take the four corners of this very square looking neck base, and I'm gonna scale them inwards. And again, because they're all equidistant, they'll scale towards the middle of themselves, which will make somewhat of a circle shape. Maybe I'll scale them a little bit more together like that, and maybe a little bit out. There we go. Um, with those four faces select, or those six faces selected rather, I'm gonna do another inset, and I'll change the depth so that it actually goes out a little bit. That looks okay to me. And then I'll do an E to extrude the neck out. And so that's the character's neck. The last thing we'll do is we will extrude the character's mouth or make an inset and then extrude it inwards to make the cavity or hollow of the mouth. From the front view, I'm gonna actually space these out a little bit more. They're looking kind of funny to me how they go out and then in again right there. So I'll just scale that in maybe make these two go up and scale them out a little bit. That looks pretty good to me. Let's go ahead and select all five or six. Oh, the reason why there's uneven uh, is because we don't have a cut right there. And again, if you're using the mirror modifier, which I'll show you in the next video, uh, that won't be an issue. And let's go ahead and select all of these six faces. And I'm gonna inset again, so I'll tap I. And I want a little bit of depth here, so I'm just gonna adjust it. I want it to kind of stick out. If there's no depth, it's too flat right there. So I'll just adjust it like so. Maybe I'll scale it a little bit too. Okay. I wanna make some sort of a, sort of a lip or edge here to make, give some thickness to the bunny. Um, so I'm gonna do another inset, I. But I wanna go inside this time, so I'll turn the depth down to negative something. And I don't want very much thickness at all, because I want it to sort of just be a, an edge, kind of like so. Maybe go in a little bit more to make the bunny a little bit thicker skinned. <laughs> okay, so there's the mouth, but we want to extrude inwards to make kind of the hollow of the mouth. So what I'll do is I'm gonna tap Z on my keyboard. And Z toggles between solid view and wireframe view. So I wanna extrude inwards, so I'll tap E, but it's going up diagonally, so I'll tap Y, and that will, uh, or constrict it to only the Y axis. So I'll pull it back 
to about as far as I want it to go. You'll notice though that it kind of maintains that shape of the front of the face, but ideally I actually like it to be the other way. I like it to be kind of bold this way. So I'm going to use my move or scale gizmo rather, and I'm going to pull back and scale this set of edges on the y-axis to actually be and flip in the opposite direction. Okay, so we just dragged it in the opposite direction to make it kind of go the other way. And from the side view, I'm going to rotate them to kind of make them go straight up and down from that angle. And I'll do one last loop cut around the kind of circumference of the cavity of the mouth and put it right about there and I'll scale it to make it bigger. Just make sure that you don't go outside the bunny's face like that. If you uh, accidentally do that, you can always go back to your side view and go into edge select mode and alt select that edge loop and scale it on the X axis to make it fit in the bunny's head. So in this video, we've reviewed how to get into edit mode, how to select vertices, faces, and edges, how to use extrude, how to use um, the loop cut and slide tool, how to use subdivide to round out a basic default cube, um, and the process you would take to make a character, uh, or at least a character's head. I could keep on going, and I could extrude out the bottom of this neck uh, to make part of the body, and then extrude sideways out to make kind of shoulders, and then extrude down more, and extrude arms and legs, but we're not going to get there in this video. In the next video, again, we'll be talking about two modifiers. The first is how to create both halves of the character at the same time using what's called the mirror modifier. And then we'll talk about the subdivision surface modifier, which will make your character look all nice and smooth. But that's going to be it for this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.